we are currently in the theme of environmental degradation and when it comes to environmental degradation the first question that we are going to discuss is a 2023 question which reads as consider the following there is aerosols foam agents fire retardants and lubricants so these are all different types of chemicals that act as basis of certain other things for example if you have a room freshener your aerosol is the base on which the room freshener is created if you have a foam agent for any of those cleaning um, uh, what you say uh, stuff that is there any kind of cleaning liquids that is there foam agent is the base that is there so in the making of how many of the above are hydrofluorocarbons used so hydrofluorocarbons or as you know hfcs are the major reason as to how or why the ozone gets depleted if you look at all of these options over here you will understand that all four of them have a very active role in your ozone depletion and you also can understand that because primarily any of these components have compounds of fluorine or carb chlorine present in it and that is the reason why you will see that this is all the four options are something that can release your hydrochlorofluorocarbons. Moving forward, we have to talk a little bit about mercury pollution. Mercury pollution and again this is a 2023 question. Mercury pollution was a problem that we had tackled through certain conventions and treaties in one very famous convention and treaty called as your Minamata Treaty. Nevertheless, mercury pollution still is seen. It's not in the pollution level, but the production of mercury, the uh, transport of mercury, these activities are still happening in low scales. And thus, this question has been asked. The question reads as, consider the following statements regarding mercury pollution. Gold mining activity is a source of mercury pollution in the world. Coal-based thermal power plants cause mercury pollution. And there is no known safe level of exposure to mercury. How many of the above statements are correct is what is being asked. So, first of all, I want you to understand when it comes to um, your mercury extraction, you do see that whenever uh, see you, you have to extract gold, at that point, mercury is used as a catalyst in that process. So, this is the reason why where they say whenever you have the gold mining activity also, you have a certain amount of mercury pollution happening. Another very important thing to understand is mercury is not used as mercury itself. Mercury is used as a cyanide when it comes to your gold mining activities. Got it? So, in that is how extent you all know when you talk about cyanide, it's a very poisonous toxic substance that is there. In the case of gold mining, you are using mercury in the form of a cyanide and this is the reason why gold mining can cause mercury pollution. That is correct. When it comes to coal based thermal power plants, what again happens is coal which is derived from your underground sources it has a lot of impurities you have silicon carbon you have your mercury lead you have different kinds of impurities that is there in your coal when the coal is burnt to release energy certain compounds which remain unburnt like your mercury lead silicon etc they tend to be pollutants and they get released into the atmosphere this is how coal based thermal power plants can also cause mercury pollution. Unfortunately, even right now, when it comes to several other elements, they have fixed the safe levels of different compounds for lead and silicon and etc. But for mercury, they have not yet fixed a safe level. So, the answer to this question is C, all the three. All three statements are correct with respect to this question. Now, as we move forward, it's a 2023 question which reads as, consider the following activities, spreading finely ground basalt rock on farmlands extensively, increasing the alkalinity of oceans by adding lime, capturing carbon dioxide released by various industries and pumping it into abandoned subterranean mines in the form of carbonated waters. How many of the above activities are considered and discussed for carbon capture and sequestration? 
First of all, understand carbon capture and sequestration is primarily a process wherein what happens is the carbon dioxide that is there in the atmosphere is somehow made to react with something or the carbon dioxide is directly captured and stored at some place. So, clearly the last one which says capturing carbon dioxide released by various industries and pumping it into some subterranean area, it can be unused coal mines, unused oil mines etc. So, all of these areas that can happen. The second one is increasing the alkalinity of oceans by adding lime. So, what happens is when you add lime to oceans, carbon dioxide that is there in an excess, they start reacting with lime it starts forming different other carbonate particles and it gets into the so into the water itself it gets trapped in that way so what has happened excess of carbon dioxide has gotten captured from your atmosphere finally spreading of finely ground basalt on farmlands again what happens is basalt has the ability it's a igneous rock so what happens is carbon dioxide starts reacting with the basalt and it forms certain compounds that get captured in your soil so all of these three activities are something that is captured and it is stored in your soil areas itself okay so what happens is all of these three processes aid in carbon capture and sequestration this question is a 2022 question which reads as among the following crops which one is the most important anthropogenic source of both methane and nitrous oxide okay it's not just methane it's two major gases that they have looked at and anthropogenic i hope you do understand it means your man-made or human cost four crops they have given cotton rice sugarcane wheat okay now i'll just tell you a brief idea about these crops over here when it comes to cotton of wheat they grow cotton grows in black soil and wheat grows in your normal loamy soils that are there uh, both of these crops do not have so much of water requirement their water requirement is quite less um, as you can see wheat normally grows even in the winter season so these both crops do not have so much of specular conditions that can maybe cause these things the methane and nitrous oxide when it comes to sugarcane, it does require water and it does require a lot of fertilizer. So, yes, nitrous oxide releasing is something that happens when it comes to your sugarcane. But the crop that is having both release of methane and nitrous oxide is your rice. And that primarily has to do with the idea that rice is grown in flooded, semi-flooded areas and with the water stagnating so when the water starts stagnating on the first place itself what starts happening is you do have a lot of uh, microorganisms that start growing in that stagnated water and because of that stagnated condition, what uh, you have microorganisms, you have the organic matter that is mixed with the water, there is decomposition process that is happening. On top of it, the rice is also given certain fertilizers. So, what happens is the fertilizer causes the nitrous oxide, the decomposition cross causes your methane release also. Thus, the answer for this question is B, rice. Next, we have a 2021 question. The question reads as, with reference to furnace oil, consider the following statements. It is a product of oil refineries. Some industries use it to generate power. It its use causes sulfur emissions into the environment. So, again, furnace oil is considered to be one of the most impure byproducts of petroleum distillation okay so whatever is the final product that comes out of it which is not having any much of petroleum or anything in it but it's quite impure so the first is correct it's a product of oil refineries some industries use it to generate power yes because this works as a lubricant it works as a something that can be burnt so yes second option is also correct Third, once it is burnt, because I told you it's, cons it's having such high amount of impurities in it, what happens is once it's burnt, 
whatever impurities in the form of sulfur and lead and mercury and all it gets into the environment so the answer to this question is d 1 2 and 3 <coughs> Next, we have a 2021 question. The question reads as magnetite particles. Magnetite primarily is an iron related particle. You have hematite, magnetite, etc. Iron related particle. Okay. Magnetite particles suspected to cause neurodegenerative problems are generated as environmental pollutants from which of the following? Brakes of motor vehicles, engines of motor vehicles, microwave stoves within homes, power plants, telephone lines, which is an option that you might be sure of because I told you it's it's at the end of the day, it is iron, iron particles. From which of this, uh, by uh, with all our discussion that has been happening till now, which one do you think has the ability to maybe release iron particles in different forms iron in the form of oxides iron in the form of you know combining with different things your power plants okay because i told you in the power plants you are burning your coal and your petroleum the impurities have iron in it the iron not only iron several other compounds now what happens the oxygen reacts with it and gets released so power plants is a sure short thing that means four should be there in your answer if you look at it over here there are three options which have four in it Okay, now which is the next one that you can be sure of? The next one that you can be sure of is after your burning in the power plants, another area where there is burning happening of your coal and petroleum. Engines of motor vehicles, from there also you can have magnetite released. So, two option is also correct. So, when you look at this now, you need an option which has four and two in it. And thus, we are left with... 1, 2 and 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, okay. So, now here we have to understand if brakes of motor vehicles, microwave stoves or telephone lines cause any of this. There is no evidence of any of the other three causing iron oxide particles, especially telephone lines, etc. Microwaves have other problems, but not iron particles getting released, got it. Uh, in fact, iron is not something that you can even use in certain microwave stoves. So, your answer over here is B, 1, 2 and 4. If I had to ask you, the instead of iron uh, microwave stoves, if they had said open cooking using uh, wood, that would have been an answer. Why? Because even there, you are burning substances that has iron in it, Okay, because you are burning biomass. So, the answer to this particular question right now is B, 1, 2 and 4 only. <coughs>